So, uh, people often ask me uh, about buying on eBay. You know, I have people ask me for 6309s, and uh, a common sentiment I see is that there's too many fakes, and you can't trust eBay, and you never, you just never know what's going to be going on, and so you've got to, you've just got to be careful, and people seem to be really hesitant. There are still treasures to be found on eBay. This is a, uh, this is a case in point. This just showed up in the mail. I got this, I saw this on eBay, and the guy said, uh, uh, for a best offer, he had a price on it, best offer, and I made a reasonable, a good, a not a bad offer, I made a solid offer for this thing, and, uh, he took it. Now, my first initial glance at it, it was like when I first saw the, the listing, I was like, well, you know, I looked, the things that I look at that made me look at it more closely, my first impression, well, I saw the hands and I'm like, okay, yikes, that's pretty normal because water gets in and it sits on these things and it kind of destroys them. And these are, these are pretty worked over. I may be able to bring these back depending. I have a method for clearing these uh, chemically that often can bring these like this especially I might be able to bring that back to nice and shiny the loom is garbage there's nothing I can do about it and I was like but I was looking at the hands and it just wasn't pretty looking I could also tell that it's got this domed sapphire on it this aftermarket thing and it changes the way the dial looks it gives it because it's double dome it magnifies it gives it more depth but the blue tint also it just kind of looks a little cheap to me uh, and so I think it made the watch look not as good. But then, I don't know why, I started looking at it more closely, and I said, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And th this is the first new thing I noticed. I was like, look at that insert. That's a pretty decent insert with the original pit, the original loom. And I was like, and that dial looks pretty good. And I was looking at it pretty closely, and I said, ooh, it's the third variant dial. We don't see that very often. A lot of people don't even know these exist. That is the third variant dial. Uh, it's, well, how about this? Why don't I, well, hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, I just had to grab a watch. So this is the first variant. This is a standard SUA. 6309 TL. Let me go get another, let me go get a, a non sua dial. Well, I'm sorry to say, I don't actually have one. This is a fake dial. You, this is one of the infamous Hong Ko dials, uh, one of the earliest fakes that were brought out of these. These are actually interesting because they were made on, they were reprinted on genuine Seiko dial blanks. You can tell because it's got a little bit of a date window around it. One of those, one of those funky bits, but whenever you see the, the Hong Ko, it's definitely fake. So those were those are the two general varieties that you would see. Okay, that's the standard one. But this, I saw this and I'm like, aha. Now, I don't know the history. I don't honestly know what this is all about. It's got a SUA symbol on it. It doesn't say where it was made. Um, and I'm gonna be curious, the watch is from 1974 November, 1984 November. So I'll be very curious to see the dial date on this, on this watch. Dial loom's a little puffy, not bad. A little bit of patina. I have a new old stock set of 6309 hands that does a little great on this. A little faded down. I haven't looked at the movement on this at all. The listing didn't show it. Let me, let me open up the case back and let's let's see together. Let's find out together what we've got in here. That opened up pretty smoothly. Somebody had some fun brushing the back. Hmm. 6309A. Typical worn lower mainspring arbor port. Pretty worn. The whole thing's shifting. You look at this screw here. You can see that shifting around, so that's pretty normal. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess we can power it up and we can see what kind of numbers it gives us just for fun. That's what I always used to do. So let's get this thing up to 
full power here, such as it is. And let's see what numbers it's going to give us. I don't know the answer. You and I are going to find out together. Okay. Hmm. Well, it's pretty steady. It's out of adjustment. It's got beat error. But that, wow, look at that amplitude. That can't be right. What? That can't be right. I don't buy that for a second. If for, for it to be that powerful and yet have this kind of raggedy stuff going on, like this, this kind of wickedy stuff. I don't know, man. I'll have to see how that performs long term, but that's nuts. I mean, I do generally get better numbers off the bat out of non suba movements, which is definitely what this would be, but when you see this kind of raggediness, that's, that's not a good sign, but look at that amplitude. That's wild. I mean, it definitely ha it has to be serviced. That lower main spring arbor port is wasted, but let's see what we've got for sustained numbers. I bet you I'll find that the mainspring barrel was filled with oil. That sometimes will boost our numbers quite a lot. Hmm. That is some wackiness. Hmm. Well, when I rip this thing apart, we will uh, we'll see how we do. Okay, well... Looking fun. closely at this, um, somebody must have done some doctoring to it because it's it's running still with pretty steadily high amplitude, which it shouldn't. Like, there's no lubricant under this capsule at all, and there's like there's like a little hair fiber thing over here. There's scoring on the top of the mainspring barrel. The watch overall is dirty, and it's got old flat seals. They're not completely garbage, but it should not be running this high. There are no servicing marks inside the case back. All I can think was that the watch is low miles, doesn't have a lot of time on it, um, and that someone bought it from like an estate or something, and then uh, they replaced the crystal and they just fired it up. And so what we're seeing here is not numbers as a result of the movement being serviced, but numbers as a result of the movement not being terribly worn because it didn't have a lot of miles on it. But I don't know. When I get some time here in the middle of the night or something or over the weekends or something, I'll rip this thing apart and we'll see, we'll see what we can find. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, so we'll find out more about that. And if anybody knows anything about those, those dials, those, those specific dials that don't, that just have that little bit of text at the bottom, Man, let me know, because I'm actually, I'm curious about them, and I don't know. I'm, one theory I've read is that they were service dials, but this watch doesn't have any servicing marks inside of it, none. Oops, got all dirty, yucky. Yep, no servicing marks. So anyway, that'll be interesting to see. There we go. All right, bye.